In this lecture, we're going to look at the useful functions to work with dates and times. We can call the now function to get the current date and time. Let's select it. So here's the current date and time on my machine. We also have current date, which is short for current date. And this returns the current date without the time component. And similarly, we have current time, which returns the current time. Let's take a look. So here's the result. Pretty straightforward. Now we have a bunch of functions for extracting certain components in a date or time. For example, you can get the current date time and then extract the year by calling the year function. So here we call the now function. This function returns a date time object and then we pass that as an argument to the year function. Take a look. So the current year is 2019. We can also get the current month which is March or the current day. Or we can call the hour function to get the current hour or the minute or the second. Pretty useful functions. Now, all these functions return integer values, but we have two useful functions that return strings. For example, we can call day name to get the day of the week as a string. Or we can call month name to get the month as a string. Now, apart from these functions, we also have the extract function. The good thing about this function is that it is part of the standard SQL language. So if you want to be able to port your code to other database management systems, it's better to use the extract function. Here's how it works. When we call it, first we need to specify a unit, like year, month, day, second, and so on. So let's get the day from the current date. This returns 11, or we can extract the year from this date. That returns 2019. So when we call this function, we type out a unit, then the from keyword, and then a date time value. So these are the essential functions to work with dates and times. In the next lecture, we'll look at formatting dates and times. Here's your exercise for this tutorial. Earlier in the course, we wrote this query to get the orders placed this year. There, we assume that the current year is 2019, and we wrote our query with a WHERE clause like this. Now, as I told you before, this is an unreliable way of returning the orders placed in the current year. Because next year, in year 2020, this query will return any orders placed after January 1st, 2019. So it will return the orders placed in both 2019 and 2020. Now, in this lecture, you learned how to get the current date and extract various components like year, month, day, and so on. So now go ahead and modify this query to reliably return the orders placed in the current year. All right, the solution is pretty easy. Instead of hard coding a date value here, we should call the now function to get the current date time. Now we pass the current date time to the year function to extract the current year. And then similarly, we pass this order date to the year function to get the year of the order and then check to see if both these years are equal. This query will return all the orders placed in the current year. Let's take a look. So since we're currently in 2019, this query returns only one order that is placed in the current year. In the future, when you watch this course, this query is not going to return anything because in our sample data set, we don't have any orders placed after 2019. So if you want to test this query, you'll have to manually update the data of one of the orders. 